Hey there, Mr. Redder here. Welcome back to another episode of r slash Entitled People Stories. Our first story we'll be reading today. Karen threatens me with child support. I laugh in her face. After that, Karen raises my rent, so I move out. And after that, am I the jerk for refusing to answer to a nickname I don't like? Now for every thumbs up this video gets, one Karen has to pay her child support. Can't garnish my wages if I don't have any. So please smash that like button and subscribe and turn on notifications for new stories from Reddit every single day. Karen threatens me with child support, I laugh in her face. The title makes me sound like the biggest jerk in the world, but hear me out. I, 35 male, have four kids. My youngest is six and my oldest is 14, all to my ex-wife Clara. I have two girls and two twin boys who are 10. I love my kids more than life. I work full time so my kids live with my ex, although sometimes they will come to my house after school and I will drop them off the next morning on my way to work. My kids come to my house almost every weekend except for when they stay at grandparents or friends houses. My ex doesn't have a very good job. She's a cashier and her boyfriend works at KFC. I know money is tight for them so I often send the kids home with snacks for school. I buy them most of their clothes and a lot of extra things that they want like jewelry, phones, playstations, etc. Well, the other day, Clara called me asking if we could meet up for lunch. As soon as I got there, she got straight to the point, saying she expected $500 in child support every week or she's taking me to court. I laughed at her and she called me an arrogant deadbeat and walked out. Although I do have a good paying job and I could pay her, it's the principle of it. If she had just told me that the money was tight, I would have said of course and shipped in, but seeing as she demanded it, I don't want to. My eldest daughter is asking me to because she doesn't want her mom to make sure I don't see my kids anymore, but to be honest, I don't think she stands a chance in court. My parents and sister told me I am a huge jerk for not only freaking out my daughter, but not paying Clara when she needs it the most. So am I the jerk? Update. These comments are making some good points, but I'm awfully confused now. I've never thought about why there was never a plan in place. I just signed the papers and it never really got brought up again. When we first divorced, I asked her what custody was going to look like and she just said, don't worry about it. Before she got her job, I was paying around $100 every second week, but when she got the job, she told me that the money made her feel like she was dependent on me. But there was never actually an order in place. I just never thought about it. Is there someone I should go to to look at things and see what I should do? I think you should go to a court so a judge can decide a fair amount of child support for the kids. It's about their well-being, not yours or their mother's. Go to court to figure out how much to give your kids the best life possible. You're the jerk. 1. Your ex never should have involved a kid in an adult situation. That had to be said first. Your daughter should not be worried about this. 2. Your ex is raising four kids the majority of the time. That's a lot of money being spent on them. You said yourself she doesn't have a good job and struggles. Why would you want your kids to live in a home where there is financial instability? 3. You said you can afford $2,000 a month in child support but flat out refused because you didn't like the way she broached the subject. That alone makes you a jerk. If you are so convinced she doesn't stand a chance in court, then take her to court to settle custody. Oh wait. You're perfectly happy letting her do the majority to raise the kids while you just have visits, but you don't want to have to pay for that. 4. You'll buy them clothes and things to play with, but what about daily food, electricity, grooming supplies, laundry supplies, school lunches, water, the list goes on and on and on. It adds up fast. Pay your fair share for your kids. If you think $2,000 a month is too much, then either negotiate with her on what you feel is fair or run it through the court system and let them decide what's fair. 5. Grow up and stop acting like your ex has to come to you on a bended knee in order for you to be a darn father. Edit. Thank you for all the awards. They're my first. I also want to say I don't think this guy is necessarily a bad guy. I just don't think he is thinking things through all of the way. Karen raises my rent, so I move out. For context, I, 22 female, and J, 32 female, moved into a house together about two years ago. Her name is on the lease and she is technically renting me and her brother and his friend, both 36 male, rooms in this house. 
The two guys downstairs are only there for four days a month due to their jobs and she charges them half as much as me for rent. They also use the full-sized garage in the back to store things. For the last two years, Jay and I have lived together semi-peacefully. She's quite messy and due to my mental health, messes causing worse anxiety and depression, I tend to clean up a lot after her. She also has two dogs and a cat. She asks me to feed and let out her dogs on a regular basis. Her dogs will sometimes get into the garbage or her cat will go to the bathroom downstairs and Jay expects the first person to see the mess to clean it up, even though it's from her animals. I also have a small room that barely fits my bed, while Jay has a bedroom and a spare room to herself. The boys have a whole basement and the garage to themselves. Now to the issue that broke the last straw for me. Jay gets our hydro and electricity bill every two months and for the last billing period, she got a huge bill. It's winter and we do live in northern Canada, so it can get quite cold. I was also gone on vacation for three out of the eight weeks that this bill was covering. Jay has been complaining about how expensive utilities are and how outrageous this is for her to pay all of this. I pay her rent for March a few days early, so she has time to e-transfer rent to the actual owner of the house. I sent her an extra $100 because I felt bad about the utilities, and after she received it, she texted me and asked for an extra $150. So, $250 on top of my normal rent. Jay only pays about $100 in rent, and then covers the utilities. That was our verbal agreement two years ago. But now, all of a sudden, the utilities should be my responsibility too. She's making me feel like a freeloader that costs her so much money. My friend just bought a house and offered to let me move in. So last night, I gave Jay my notice and told her I would be out of here at the end of March. I'm actually moving out next week because I cannot stand to be here any longer. I feel like I'm unwanted in my own space now. Now Jay is upset with me because I'm putting more of a financial burden on her, but my friend offered me a cheaper rent and won't charge me for utilities out of the blue. My friend is also much cleaner and has been a huge emotional support as I've been living with Jay and trying to keep the house functional. So. Am I the jerk for moving out and putting financial stress on Jay? Not the jerk. Get out of there now. It seems like she's taking advantage of you. You just got a better offer. Not your responsibility to make her life easier at your own expense. Am I the jerk for refusing to answer to a nickname I don't like? I, 28 female, was named after a really obscure character from Greek mythology. My preferred nickname is taken from the end of my name. I always introduce myself with I'm my name, but you can call me nickname. None of my coworkers in the small business we work for have ever had a problem with this before, until Megan, who's 25, the niece of Jeff, who's in his 50s, one of the two owners was hired. Jeff and Dave, both in their 50s, co-own the business, but Dave does the actual day-to-day -day running of the business. I introduced myself and my nickname as usual, but she immediately said that Bessie, not the actual name, would be a better nickname because it comes from the beginning of my name and that she liked it better. I told her I really didn't like that nickname and wouldn't answer to it and asked her to please not call me Bessie, but she insisted that it was so much prettier and that I just needed to get used to it. For the next two months, she tried to call me Bessie, but I completely ignored her whenever she addressed me that way, even when I knew she really needed my help with something. She would call my desk phone and say, hey Bessie, I would reply, you have the wrong number, there's no Bessie here, and hang up. She then tried to get some of the employees outside the office to start calling me Bessie, but I quickly shut that down. I usually finish my work early and help them with a lot of tedious little things that aren't part of my job description and threaten to stop helping them unless she used my preferred nickname. Friday, she decided she was going to get me to respond to Bessie no matter what. We have an open office design but are at opposite ends. She started calling out Bessie in a sing-along voice over and over again to try and annoy me enough to respond. Other coworkers got annoyed, most telling her to stop, and one, Lisa, who's 43, telling me to just let her call me Bessie already. I refused, and she kept calling out Bessie louder and louder until Dave barged in. He had been on a conference call with an important client and could hear yelling from his office down the hall. He told her to be quiet and that if she called me Bessie one more time, he'd write her up and dock her pay. Later, Megan cornered me in the break room, called me a jerk for getting her in trouble 
and called me Bessie again for good measure, just as Dave was walking in to heat up his lunch. He gave her a stern look and said, I warned you. Then he walked to HR to have her written up. Lisa is saying I'm the jerk for never helping Megan and that if I had been nicer or hadn't fought her so hard on the nickname, she probably would have given up on it a while ago. But because I made such a big deal out of it, it became a challenge. So Reddit, am I the jerk? You're not the jerk. You established a boundary and her determination to break it is going to keep getting her into trouble. My entitled neighbors stole my garage twice. I live in the northeast of England and I'm originally from Wales. I've owned a house in Wales I've been renting out for the last 10 years. Everything has been super smooth until a year ago. The tenant stopped paying rent, made multiple promises to pay, etc. In the end, I got so frustrated I decided to sell the place. I cut my losses on the outstanding rent, circa £3,000, and told the tenant if he left by certain date, I'd write off the rent. Tenant goes over the deadline by a couple of weeks, but ultimately leaves. However, the house is in a terrible condition. The tenant had painted many of the walls bright orange and had got this paint everywhere, including the carpet and skirting boards. The oven had half-cooked rotten food. He had been too lazy to put rubbish in the outside bin, so simply threw it in the shed. Anyway, a bit of a side story, but for context, I live six hours away, but my mom and stepfather live 30 minutes away. I've decided to sell, but of course I can't sell the house in its current state. My mom has generously offered to help, and we set a date for me to come back down to start the work. We order a skip, etc. Two solid days work later, the place is looking much better. It's not going to win house of the year, but enough to sell. One of the issues is that we can't seem to get the garage key to work. My stepfather promises to come the following week and drill the lockout. Fast forward to the following week and my stepfather is in the process of drilling the lockout when he's interrupted by a neighbor who we will call Entitled Neighbor. Entitled Neighbor Excuse me, can you please stop doing that? You're damaging my garage. Stepfather Uh, actually, this garage belongs to my stepson who's selling this house. Entitled Neighbor Well, I've been using this garage for the last 12 months, so he has no right. Stepfather doesn't know what to say. Turns out that the entitled neighbor noticed the tenant wasn't using the garage, so drilled out the locks, swapped a new lock, and started using it. When it was finally opened, it was full to the brim with his stuff. He didn't think anyone would notice. I find out the information and call him, telling him he has 24 hours to empty the garage and replace the lock. He can't do it within 24 hours apparently, but apologizes and promises to drop the new keys through the letterbox in a few days. It's annoying, but luckily it's all working out and I don't want to cause too much hassle with the neighbor. My mom visited the house the following week, picked up the key, opened the garage, and yes, it was now empty. Job done. Fast forward six months, house is sold, arranging key handover, etc. However, I get a text from the new owner the following day. Under the sale contract, it's my responsibility to ensure the house and any buildings are empty for the sale. Otherwise, I can be liable for costs, etc. Straight away, I know what's happened and call the entitled neighbor. Turns out he kept a spare key on the lock change. Yes, in hindsight, I should have had my own lock, but I didn't think anyone would be that stupid. He noticed no one was using the garage, so he decided to start using it again. I was furious. He couldn't understand why I was so mad. But you weren't using it, so what's the big issue? Well, did you ask my permission? No. Does the garage belong to you? No. What do you expect? I gave him one hour to clear the garage before I call the police and order a clearance company to empty the garage. The sheer cheek of the man. Anyway, all sorted now, garage is empty, locks have been changed, and having sold the property, the entitled neighbor is now someone else's problem. Am I the jerk for not waking my boyfriend, which made him late to his first day at a new job? I, 28 female, have lived with my boyfriend, 30 male, for three years now. When I first stayed the night and he overslept, I woke him up. He woke up in a bad mood and after a big fight made it absolutely clear that I should not wake him up even if I knew he would be late to meeting the Pope, his words. After I calmed down, I wrote a contract that said I would never wake him up under any circumstances short of an emergency as long as he never blames me for oversleeping. He laughed and signed it. I kept it with my important documents. 
Daughter of two lawyers, get everything in writing and don't sign anything unless you and your lawyer read it are rules I live by. Fast forward to yesterday. He just started a new job, celebrated the night before playing with some guys online. He had to wake up by 7 a.m. I woke up at 5 a.m. like usual, did all my stuff. By the time it was 7 a.m., he didn't wake up. I left the house at 8.15 a.m. and he was still asleep. When I got back, he was there and he was very angry. He started shouting and blamed me for being late, saying I should have woken him up when I noticed he overslept. All I did was stay silent until he stopped shouting, then showed him the paper he signed. And then I said, I never woke you up and I never will. You're an adult and you can set an alarm like the rest of us. Also, you being late is a you problem and I have no part in it at all. Now he says I'm the jerk and I should have known that the old rules do not apply since he no longer works for his friend that was lax with time. I still think I did nothing wrong. So, am I the jerk? Not the jerk. It also sounds like you're in a bad relationship. This guy is 30 years old and unable to wake himself up for his new job, then blames his girlfriend even though it's his responsibility? Talk about a catch and expected her to just know that she was meant to be waking him up like she's a mind reader. Guy Furious, our store isn't in alphabetical order. I work at a big chain liquor store. It's huge. Last I heard, we sold about 30,000 different products. We sort our products by variety, obviously. But once you get to, for example, the Chardonnay aisle, it goes by price. A man came in who I didn't recognize until he started speaking. He proceeded to have a nearly identical conversation with me to the last time he was here. He asks for a certain type of wine. I say I'll look it up for him. He asks if the products are ordered alphabetically, something he must have worked out by the time he's wandering around and asking for assistance. He makes a big production of sighing, rolling his eyes and saying, That's stupid, very emphatically. I spent years working at an independent grocery store where the prices were pretty expensive. I get so used to people saying stuff like, This is ridiculous. I can get this for half the price at this other store. I developed a personal policy of not giving an inch. I'm not talking about people politely inquiring or criticizing, by the way. I'm talking about people who need me to know that they're super angry about things outside of my control. So when he's repeating, It's stupid. I calmly say, Oh, okay, and continue to search for his product. Obviously, this is not the reaction he wants, so he keeps going. It's stupid. Why would they do that? Eventually, I say, still calm. Oh, I think you told me that last time. He says, then why didn't you change it? I tell him it's not up to me. The same thing I told him last time. He tells me, can I pass on a message? I say I did, but unfortunately, I don't think it will change anything as these chains all follow the same layout. Of course I didn't. My boss would just stare at me if I took him aside to tell him a customer said the store was stupid and asked us to change it. He asked when the store manager would be in next and he said he'd come talk to him. I can't imagine wasting your life like that. Sir, if you are out there, I can't possibly express how little I care what things you find stupid. Am I the jerk for telling my daughter I don't regret sending her away? So I, 46 female, was married and had two daughters. When Abby was five and Sarah was eight, my husband passed. It was awful and really affected the two girls and after he passed, we went to family therapy for a long time. When Sarah was 13, I started to date again and this is where the problem started. Sarah started to act out a lot, screaming, breaking things and more. I kept my new boyfriend away and started Sarah in private therapy and therapy with me in the sessions. We stopped family therapy when she was 11. It didn't help and just kept getting worse and worse. It got to the point where I broke up with the boyfriend at the time since I thought it would help Sarah. It didn't get better and really affected the relationship between the two sisters. Abby started to resent Sarah for her actions. When Sarah was 15, she and her friends, she was not in a good crowd at school, snuck out of the house and stole a friend's parent's car. They were caught by one of the parents and Sarah was in the driver's seat drunk. That was the last straw. I signed her up for teen rehab programs that deal with all types of issues. Since Sarah was considered a flight risk, since she sneaks out of the house all the time, they picked her up in the middle of the night. She was in the program for six months, and during that time I sold the house and moved to a different state so all of us would have a fresh start. 
After Sarah got back from the program, she was a lot better. There was still work to do, but the whole family was able to get through it. Though the relationship between Sarah and Abby has never been close since. Today, Sarah is 22 and is back from college for spring break. Yesterday, we were looking at old family photos from our old house. Sarah was quiet for most of it and asked me if I regretted sending her to that program. I told her no. Sarah was shocked and started crying, saying that place was a nightmare that she has to work through to this day. I said, I know. I heard the extremely strict rules that place had before. She screams, if you knew it was horrible for me, then why don't you regret sending me there? And I told her she would have ended up in jail without it. She hasn't talked to me since, so am I the jerk? Edit, I was told this is relevant. No, she has told me nothing bad happened to her there. The program allowed each kid to have a flip phone 24-7 to call their parents at any time. I received many calls at all times of the day from her. The first week she was there, I received over 100 calls a day of her screaming at me. I even visited at random times to make sure everything was okay. No warning for the program, just showed up. The hardest part for Sarah, she said, was losing her freedom. There was a schedule she had to follow. Nothing would get her out of it. If she didn't help clean the kitchen, then she would be assigned that task until she did. Entitled mom thinks our fresh milk is too expensive, wants to buy calf instead. After reading and listening to stories from this subreddit for over a year now, I have dreamed of the day I would encounter a Karen or entitled parent in the wild, never expecting it to ever happen. But today was the day, and boy, what an encounter it was. So, for a little bit of background, my grandma works on a medium-sized dairy farm as kind of a manager, and I, 18 female, help her out from time to time. We have a thing called milk filling station. It's basically a vending machine where you can buy fresh milk from us, and it's one euro per liter. We're located on a hill a little outside a small village and surrounded by meadows and forests, so we do get some hikers or families on a nice walk from time to time, especially on the weekends and they usually look at the calves and buy some milk. One shift here usually includes four people. Everyone has different jobs to fulfill, so most of the time you're alone just doing your task and my job is essential for the milking process as it includes bringing the cows to the milking station and back to their herds. And now onto the actual story. As I've mentioned, I'm alone most of the time, just doing my thing, running around inside the farm. It's a restricted area. We have signs up since it can be quite dangerous but the gates are open to make work easier and for ventilation, so theoretically everyone could walk in. Still, I was kind of surprised when I, in the midst of literally shoveling cow dew, was met with a rather annoyed ahem behind me. I turned around, shovel still in hand, and saw a woman maybe in her mid-thirties standing before me, way too overdressed to be seen anywhere near a farm. She also didn't look like she was on a casual walk with her family. At least I wouldn't do one in the high heels she was wearing. She was looking at me rather angrily, and I immediately knew that this probably was the day I'd been waiting for, although I never expected it to be here of all places. Before I could even so much as open my mouth, she already started speaking in a very condescending tone to me. Finally, I've been looking for someone to help me for ages. Why are none of you doing your job and being there when you're needed? I was instantly annoyed with this woman. Because how dare she come in here and talk to me like that? And also, what job was she referring to? Because I, for one, was doing mine right at this moment, and it was strictly timed. I had to get stuff done with zero time to listen to this lady. Still, I tried to give her the benefit of the doubt and be nice. Sorry, if you're referring to the office in the front, there usually is no one since we're all in here doing our job. What's the problem? Maybe I can help. I thought that maybe she's had a flat tire or something around here and needed help because I legitimately had no idea what someone dressed like her could want on a dairy farm. She just scoffed at me. Huh? Unbelievable. You should be over there in case someone needs your help like I do. Anyways, your milk is too expensive. Me. I'm sorry, what? I said your milk is too expensive. I want a better price. She was saying every word slowly and loudly as if she thought I was disabled. Me. Oh, you're talking about the vending machine. I'm sorry, but that's a fixed price. I can't change that. And in my opinion, she cut me off. I didn't ask for your opinion. It's way cheaper at the supermarket. 
but my daughter wanted to try fresh milk, so we drove here. You should match the price at the supermarkets, or you won't sell much. Me, ma'am, we're not a supermarket. We're selling the leftover fresh milk so it doesn't go to waste. She cuts me off again. What? That's leftover milk? Ew! And to imagine my daughter could have drank that. Now, for clarification, when I said leftover milk, I meant that it was fresh milk, as in barely out of the cow fresh, that we weren't able to sell to the company which collects our milk because they have fixed numbers and if we produce more milk than those numbers, we would have to throw it away. But with the vending machine, at least some of it still gets sold. If you want fresher milk than that, you would have to milk the cow yourself right into the bottle. I started to try and explain this to the entitled mom, but she immediately cut me off again. No, no, this is unacceptable. Neither me nor my child will drink old milk. And then the dreaded sentence came. I want to speak to your manager. I already had enough of this BS, pun intended. And as I've already said, a strictly timed job that I had to get back to. Because we were in the middle of milking our cows and this lady was literally holding up the whole process by holding up me. So I was more than happy to agree and get her to my manager, my grandma, and have her out of my hair. I just motioned for her to follow me and speed walked in the direction of the front office while the lady was trying to keep up in her high heels without breaking her ankles. Now, our office is in kind of another building and the door closest to us was locked. So we had to walk around the building, across the parking lot for the workers and through another entrance that happened to be right beside the boxes we kept the newborn calves in. This also was the place where I met the before mentioned daughter of Entitled Mom. The girl was maybe 10 years old and happily watching the calves and petting them when we came into view. As soon as she saw her mom, she ran to her and started excitingly jumping up and down. Entitled girl, Mom, Mom, look at the cute calves. She dragged her mom over to the boxes. Entitled girl, Look, it's so cute. I named her Emma. Can we keep her, please? I expected the entitled mom to maybe say something along the lines of, A cow is not a pet. Or, we don't have the space. Or maybe, I don't know how to take care of a cow. But boy, was I wrong. Instead, the mom turns to me and asks completely serious, How much are these? Now, although we do sell our male calves since they are of no use to us, I for one wasn't sure how much exactly this calf was worth. Pretty sure that there was a registration process involved in owning a cow and in no way, shape or form authorized to just sell a calf like that. And on top of that, cows aren't exactly animals you can just put in your yard and be done with. Me, I'm sorry, but I was cut off again. No, I asked how much it is. Tell me. Me, ma'am, that's a cow, not a pet. I know, but your milk is way too expensive anyways. Just sell me one of those if my daughter wants it, and we will have our own, really fresh milk. At this point, I strongly considered just walking away because there was no way this woman could be serious. She wanted to buy an animal that would grow up to be huge, heavy, and strong enough to hurt you if you handled them wrong. Not only that, but also a cow of a breed that needs to be milked twice a day because it produces as much milk as possible, which is around 30 to 50 liters at our farm. All that because one euro per liter for fresh milk apparently was too much, and her daughter thought our calves were cute. They are, but that's not the point. Plus, you need to properly take care of them, feed them right, and just getting a calf won't give you instant milk. She has to grow up, get pregnant, give birth, etc. All around, this entitled mom would have to wait another 24 to 28 months until her calf starts giving milk and then repeat the process every year so she would have new calves to take care of every year just to keep her one cow running, so to speak. Instead of telling her directly how stupid, time and money consuming this idea is, I decided to try and take the more diplomatic way. Me. Ma'am, I understand, but it's not that easy. I'm afraid I'm not able. Then get me someone who's able. I want to speak to your manager anyways. Why do you have to be such an incompetent worker? How old are you? 15? Kids shouldn't talk back to adults. That's where I had it. And so I just blurted out the best thing I could think of at the time. Me. I am an adult. And you should stop talking to me like that. I'm not obligated to help you. And in fact, we could sue you for trespassing on private property. How dare you threaten me, young lady. That is no way to talk to a person older than you. 
Learn some respect. I demand to speak to your manager. I will get you fired for this. As if she was called, my grandma stepped out of the building right at that moment, probably because she heard the commotion. Grandma, what's going on here? Entitled mom. Oh, good. Are you the manager of this place? Grandma, at the moment, yes. How can I help you? Entitled mom. This worker of yours was incredibly rude. She threatened me and my daughter and refused to help us. She even tried to assault me right before you came outside. I don't know what would have happened if you hadn't been on time. Entitled mom was trying to squeeze some fake tears out at this point, quickly swiping them away with her finger before they could ruin her very thick layer of makeup. Entitled mom. All we wanted was to ask if we could get the milk you are selling a little cheaper. And my daughter here really likes this calf over there, so we thought about buying it. My grandma was just silently listening to this woman's story, arms crossed and an eyebrow raised because she could smell the BS from three miles away. Grandma, ma'am, this is my granddaughter you're talking about, and I know for a fact that she wouldn't do any of that. Entitled mom went awfully quiet at that. Grandma, so about the milk, I maybe would have helped you out if you hadn't just lied to my face, but now I kindly ask you to just pay the full price as everyone else does, and the calf, I'm afraid I won't be able to sell it to you. Entitled mom, this is outrageous. I'm a paying customer. I would pay for this calf. Why are you refusing? My daughter wants a cow, and she likes this one there. Entitled girl. Her name is Emma. Grandma. Ma'am, that won't give you a cow. It will give you a bull. It's a male calf. Entitled mom. You're lying. You just don't want to sell it because it's pretty. My grandma just silently pointed to the big male symbol on the side of the box, clearly labeling it as a boy. At this point, the entitled mom just huffed and mumbled something about stupid uneducated people from the countryside and how she would never come back here again, which I would also really appreciate. The entitled girl was whining loudly about her Emma while her mom was dragging her back to their expensive looking car and my grandma and I watched them drive away before having a good laugh about the whole story. Support our channel by joining as a member today and we'll give you a shout out in our next video. Or come watch this video next. You won't believe what Karen does in that one.